The Tecton X2. Haha, <laughs> more like Recton. The Tecton X has been a staple in my trail shoe rotation for the last few seasons, and while I think it's still too expensive for what you get, the shoe always seems to work with whatever I throw at it. From technical terrain to meandering single track or gravel roads, this shoe just doesn't feel too extreme. The Tecton X2 is super similar to the first version, with an ample layer of Pro Fly Plus midsole, below a tightly meshed upper, with plenty of overlay protection, the stretchy vamp returns, though thinner, and the outsole is the crowd favorite Vibram Light Base. This shoe is a plated trail kicker that doesn't feel overtly stiff and can accommodate a lot of different runners comfortably. But can the $225 Trail Beast justify such a high price point without any standout features? What exactly are we paying so much for? Hopefully we'll find out in today's review. Let's dive in. What is up everybody? Ethan Newberry, the Ginger Runner here for another Ginger Runner review. Today I'm excited to talk about this one from Hoka. It is the Tecton X2. I don't know why I said it the way I said it. Uh, this is a really fun shoe and I think you're gonna enjoy this review. But before we dive in, a couple of things. First, consider joining the GR Crew. It is our global community of runners, just like yourself from around the world, who are going through the same things you're going through, training for some of the same races that you might be training for. Uh, it's just an amazing community of people, all there supporting one another. We got live streams, peeks behind the curtain from all of our films, all the music that I make for the movies. Uh, it's just a lot of fun stuff, a lot of fun perks. So consider joining the crew, support the channel, join a community, link in the description. And secondly, this shoe was provided for review by Running Warehouse. I'm under no obligation whatsoever to say anything positive or negative. I'm not financially compensated in any way for anything that I say in this review. All opinions are my own. No one has to approve it. You're the first to see it. So give yourself a pat on the things that need patent. And let's dive in and talk about the things that I like and dislike about the Tecton X2. Starting as always with the things that I like. The cushion, ProFly Plus, it's great. Uh, Hoka's obviously used it in a number of their shoes now and the Tecton is no exception. It's certainly a midsole that has some softness, some responsiveness. Uh, it is very comfortable underfoot and as soon as you pull these out of the box, you'll get exactly what I'm talking about. It's a comfortable shoe and I like that cushioning. Grip, in the form of Vibram Light Base. I love a good grip and I love a good Vibram. Uh, in this case, it's this sort of like soft blue turquoise, if you will. Topaz uh, that I really, really like. It's sort of a cool standout feature and with the smaller lugs, not so aggressive, the shoe works well in a variety of surfaces and gets you the grip when you really, really need it. As far as weather and mud and things like that, that's certainly where these little lugs are gonna maybe not work so well, but that's okay because the shoe adapts to multiple surfaces and that is why I like the grip. Weight, so it's not a super hyper lightweight shoe, but it's really lightweight for what you get. So we're talking about 10 ounces, 284-ish grams uh, in my size, size 11, and that is not a lot of weight for a shoe that is holding up pretty well, has some pretty good durability, some good materials, uh, plenty of grip, plenty of life left in that Vibram, um, good midsole bounce, like there's just a lot going for it and in a light package like that, I give it a thumbs up. That being said, it's not all huevos rancheros covered in tapatio and Kraken friendship bracelets given to you by people who truly get you. There are a couple of things that I dislike about the Tecton X2, let's get to those now. The fit, so this is sort of something that carries over from the first version. Uh, just looking down from the top, if you can kind of see how the laces are working here, to get a good proper fit in the shoe, I find that I really have to crank the laces down through the midfoot. Uh, it ends up bringing some material crossover here through the toe box over the vamp, which is still a soft material. It's made out of the same material as the tongue. Uh, I'm just not able to get a very precise fit in this shoe, which is the same problem I had in the Tecton X first version. Uh, many people will probably find that this fits and feels like a typical Hoka, um, but with so many other shoes on the market right now that you're able to get a bit more dialed and precise fit, I just wish that I could get these locked in better. Tongue and vamp, so that is a carryover from other shoes that Hoka's been doing. The tongue is pretty thin, it comes down pretty low on your ankle, uh, so you might end up getting some lace bite here across the top and front of your foot. Uh, the vamp itself, again, soft material, has a little bit of stretch to it, but it's just a lot of extra material that wants to bunch up. So the tongue and the vamp, I, I just, the design is sort of buggy. That's the best way to put it. Durability, I did mention that the shoe is pretty durable. I mean, we're still dealing with matrix-like materials, uh, meshes that are a bit stiffer, airier, and breathable, but I'm, I'm concerned about the longevity of the shoe because the Pro Fly Plus does want to kind of break down a little bit for me, uh, flatten out prematurely. The Vibram's holding up fine, the mesh, I'm not having too many problems with it, but Kim has the exact same pair and she's running into a lot of uh, issues with the wear and tear along the inside of the sock liner. 
So we're just dealing with some stuff that concerns us as far as the durability and longevity of the shoe. Just pointing it out. But that's it for dislikes. So let's get a bit more specific in our breakdown. We like to talk about the build quality, comfort, fit, price, and look, starting as always with the build quality. I think the shoe is built okay. I think the materials they're using certainly give it a lightweight feel, but uh, may not be as durable as we'd hoped. Comfort, it's a comfortable shoe right out of the box. That Profly might break down a bit prematurely, might flatten out a little bit for you. And in $225, it's a lot of money to spend on a shoe that might not give you the comfort right out of the box as it does one year down the road or a hundred miles down the road or, you know, however much running you're doing in the shoe. It's gonna change from start to finish. Fit, this is sort of the problem with the shoe is just getting a good dialed fit. Once you do get that lockdown or if you're able to get a lockdown when you try the shoe on, great. Uh, the shoe does wanna stretch out a little bit. So just expect that these rows of lace holes are gonna start to come closer together as the shoe starts to break in more and more. Uh, so you're just gonna need to make sure that this shoe can be dialed down and tightened to your foot specifically. Price, $225, already talked about it. It's a high price point to pay for a shoe that may not hold up as long as I'd want. Look, mine is doing fine. I have about 100-ish miles in the shoe, but uh, I'm just worried based off of Kim's experience in her shoes, which are already breaking down and she has maybe half the miles that I have in mine. Uh, that's a bit of a concern for me and I have to point that out. It's just a lot of money to spend. Uh, and finally, looks. I don't mind the looks of the shoe. I think it's bright, it's colorful, it's fun, it stands out. The women's version is the exact same colorway, so I wish there was a bit more variation in that. I'm sure they're coming out with more color versions, as Hoka does. Uh, but for right now, it's like everything's the same, and it's this. It's fine. Bringing us ultimately to our conclusion. So, this is a fun shoe, and it absolutely gets the job done. And no matter what you throw at it, it will do a decent job. Pending mud and inclement weather types of conditions. But I think they're overpriced. I think they lack a bit of that durability that I would hope for a shoe at that price point. And I think they don't stand out as anything beyond version one. Like there's nothing really that sort of separates the Tecton X2 from the Tecton X. Not so much. Uh, so that for me puts this on a scale of buy, try, or why squarely in the try category. Uh, but if you can find version one on sale, snag it. Uh, in this case, it's a try. If you haven't put your foot into a Tecton X, the Tecton X2 might be worth feeling under your feetsies. So uh, give it a shot. Tables, I'll turn to you. What do you think of the Tecton X2? Is this a shoe that you're interested in? Do you have a pair? Do you have two pairs? If you do, can I have some money? If you want any more information or if you would like to get a pair of the Tecton X2 for yourself, links in the description will take you over to Running Warehouse. They are affiliate links. They cost you nothing, but they do help the channel out. So please consider using them for your shoes, your running gear, your apparel, your nutrition, anything that you might need for those running days. Uh, consider using the link in the description. It does help us out and we love it. And if you are a GR Crew member, don't forget to use your coupon code for 10% off most of what Running Warehouse sells. It's a great perk of joining the GR Crew. Also, link in the description. That's it, my friends. Hope you're getting out there, training hard, racing harder, and parting the hardest. I know I am. We'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.